Good morning and welcome to St. Bart's Church in Manhattan. My name is Dean Wolf and I'm the rector of this parish. And on behalf of the staff and congregation, we warmly welcome you to this service. Today we gather to mark the 19th anniversary of the events of September 11, 2001, to mourn those we love and honor the heroes who sacrificed their own lives in order to save the lives of others. Because of COVID-19, we're not able to mark this occasion as we normally would when, with firefighters from Battalion 8 and from departments around the city. I was able to pray with some of those firefighters earlier this morning at the firehouse just a block from St. Bart's. And I'm glad that representatives from Battalion 8 are able to participate in this service via live stream. Thank you all for joining us today as we remember how everything changed 19 years ago as we salute those who continue to put their lives on the line for us and as we pray for a better world. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, Yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you those who died because of the attacks on September 11th, 2001. We thank you for giving them to us to know and to love as companions on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Recall those earlier days when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions knowing that you yourselves possessed something better and more lasting. Do not therefore abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward for you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man 
is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the book of Genesis, God tells God's people, I will remember. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. After the great flood, God promised never again to destroy the earth. And God remembered God's promise. Remembering is also at the core of the human experience. One of the cruelest disabilities of all is to slowly lose the carefully gathered memories of a lifetime. Eli Wiesel observed, without memory there is no culture. Without memory there would be no civilization, no society, no future. Remembering, that's what we do. We remember our childhoods. We remember the costly lessons we learn growing up. We remember the great kindnesses expressed to us over the course of our lives, just as we cannot forget the cruelties we've sometimes expressed to others. All of worship, liturgy in fact, is the theater of remembering. It is the playhouse of recalling the great acts of God through history. And of course, we remember our losses and our grief, the relationships that have been taken from us by death. The suddenness of the deaths of 9-11, the catastrophic numbers, the comparative youth of the victims, all contributed to the massive impact this tragedy had upon our families, upon our city, our nation, indeed the entire world. After all these years, 9-11 still reverberates in our memories. Nineteen years is a long time to hold on to a memory. The details can begin to fade a little around the edges. Last year at this service, I was struck by the number of young firefighters in attendance who would have little or no personal memories of 9-11. They were simply too young, and yet they are not too young to know the cost of suffering and loss. They are not too young to remember the story. And the story is as epic as it is poignant. In response to a brutal act of terrorism, heroic firefighters who understood the risks kept climbing those stairs in the hope that they might be saving lives at the top of the Twin Towers. Brave police officers did not fail to answer the call. Courageous emergency medical technicians responded to the alarm and placed themselves in harm's way. And in a remarkable footnote, so many of those who responded were not even on duty at the time the call went out. My God. Literally, my God. What bravery. How can we recall it without weeping? 
Can any of us say that we have been unaffected by these acts of self-sacrifice? Can any of us say that this devotion to duty, this honorable calling, has not in some deep way changed us? Even 19 years later, changed us. The author of the letter of the the author of the letter to the Hebrews invited his readers to recall their hard sufferings and their struggles. He wanted them to remember their abuses and their persecutions. He invited them to recall how they had accepted their losses, knowing that they have themselves possessed something better and more lasting. The thing better and more lasting for the early Christians, that was their faith. The thing better and more lasting these first responders possessed was their sense of purpose. Their vocation, literally their calling, was to risk their lives for the purpose of saving other lives. It is one of the things that makes the losses of 9-11 barely bearable. Those unspeakable losses were not for nothing. They hold meaning. The anonymous author of Hebrews, coming a generation after the apostles, counsels the faith community, do not therefore abandon the confidence of yours, It brings a great reward, for you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. A friend of mine lost his wife to cancer after a long and valiant struggle. And after time had passed, he remarried a quite remarkable woman. And because he and I are close, I was bold enough to ask him, what was it like to be still grieving the death of his former wife while he was entering into this happy new beginning? And he told me, Dean, the bitter is always mixed together with the sweet. There are wonderful, happy moments, authentic moments of joy and wonder in my life And there are sad, heartbreaking moments, and they are all mixed in together with one another, the bitter and the sweet. I often think back on that conversation. I think he's right. The bitter and the sweet are always mixed together. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. A life given in the service of others is never truly lost a life given for the common good, a life given for a higher purpose is never wasted. It stands on forever, a brilliant, shining light. It stands on forever, the grand example of what we can all do and who we all can become. It stands on forever as an invitation to achievable greatness. No firefighter I have ever met is comfortable with the term hero. But scholar Joseph Campbell once wrote, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. You see, you can seek to do everything for yourself in this life. And you can seek to save yourself from every harm. And it doesn't matter if you're a firefighter or an insurance agent, a policeman or a superhero, a first responder or a waiter or waitress. You will eventually lose your life. 
that when you lose your life for the sake of others, when you lose your life for something greater, it will never, ever be lost. You will live on as the brave heroes we honor today will live on in our memories forever. 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, people will still be telling this story. They will remember. We will remember. Remember by Christina Rossetti. Remember me when I am gone away, gone far away into the silent land, when you can no more hold me by the hand, nor I half turn to go, yet turning stay. Remember me when no more day by day you tell me of our future that you planned. Only remember me. You understand it will be late to counsel then or to pray. Yet, if you should forget me for a while and afterwards remember, do not grieve. For if the darkness and corruption leave a vestige of the thoughts that once I had, better by far you should forget and smile than that you should remember and be sad.
remembering the horrific events of this day 19 years ago, we pray to God our refuge and strength, saying, Gracious God, hear our prayer. For justice and peace in the world, gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation and its leaders, gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For members of our armed forces and diplomatic corps, both at home and abroad, gracious, gracious. God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all firefighters, police officers, medical workers, and other first responders, gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For their family members and friends who support and care for them, gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the suffering, including those who contracted illnesses because of their service at Ground Zero, Gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those battling COVID-19, for those who are out of work, and for our city as it faces another crisis. Gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who died in the attacks on September 11th, 2001, or because of injuries sustained in them, including these firefighters, who died in uniform. Captain William Burke, Jr., Engine 21. Firefighter George Kane, Ladder 7. Firefighter Michael Clark, Ladder 2. Battalion Chief Thomas DeAngelis, Battalion 8. Firefighter George D. Pasquale, Ladder 2. Firefighter Robert Fody, Ladder 7. Firefighter Willie T. Franklin, Jr., Engine 65. Firefighter Dennis Germain, Ladder 2. Firefighter Daniel Harlan, Ladder 2. Captain Frederick Ill, Jr., Ladder 2. Firefighter Thomas McCann, Engine 65. Firefighter Charles Mendez, Ladder 7. Firefighter Carl Molinaro, Ladder 2. Battalion Chief John Moran, Battalion 49, formerly Ladder 7. Firefighter Richard Muldowney, Jr., Ladder 7. Firefighter Dennis Mulligan, Ladder 2. Firefighter Douglas Oschlager, Ladder 15, formerly Ladder 7. Firefighter Robert Perro, Engine 8. Lieutenant Kenneth Phelan, Battalion 32, formerly Ladder 7. Firefighter Vincent Princiata, Ladder 7. Lieutenant Vernon Richard, Ladder 7. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For those of us still living, that even as the years pass by, we may continue to honor the sacrifices made on our behalf. Gracious God, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those born in the years since that fateful day, that generations to come may learn from the struggles their forebears endured. Gracious God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Go in safety, for you cannot go where God is not. Go in love, for God's love alone endures. And go in peace, for that is God's gift to those who delight in God's presence. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.